Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about why playing football on natural grass is better than artificial turf. So, due to an increased risk of injury, ecosystem disadvantages, and potentially dangerous chemicals that are used in artificial turf, natural grass is a better playing field. So, imagine you just placed a $500 bet on Aaron Rodgers to throw for 300 yards in his New York Jets debut. Seems like a lock until just three plays into the season, Rodgers takes the snap and trips over on the turf, tearing his Achilles, ending his season, and ending your chance at winning $500. So the purpose of my speech is, gonna is to be to teach you guys the benefits of playing football on grass as opposed to natural turf. So grass reduces the risk of injury, grass is more ecosystem friendly, and artificial turf contains a lot of harmful chemicals and elements that can be dangerous to those who play on it. This topic is relevant to you guys because you don't want your star player of your favorite team to go down to an injury just because of the surface of the field that they're playing on. So my experience in this area, I played tackle football for nine years and I've played on grass and turf fields. So I've been able to see the vast difference in the type of football that is played on each surface. So playing football on an artificial turf has a much greater chance of producing an injury than playing on grass. In 2023 alone, there were over 20 NFL injuries to ACLs, Achilles, or other serious leg injuries just on turf fields alone. So as you can see in the bottom left, Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles at the beginning of his first game, like I mentioned earlier. And in the top left up there is Jalen Phillips, who is a defensive end for the Miami Dolphins. He tore his Achilles during week 12 of the NFL season, and this was the best year of his career so far as he's trying to earn a new contract. Secondly, turf causes about 20% more non-contact injuries than grass. On the left side, you guys can see Trayvon Diggs. He's a cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys. He tore his ACL just during a simple practice drill. And on the right there is Devon HM. He's a running back for the Miami Dolphins and he suffered non-contact knee injury against the Las Vegas Raiders during week five of the 2023 NFL season. Artificial turf is designed to act like grass, but it still hasn't been perfected yet. Monofilament turf is meant to resemble grass, but the blades are a lot more chunky and they don't bend the way natural grass does, which is a big risk for injury. And slip film turf is another option, but as you guys can see, it's almost shaped more like a double helix than grass, so it doesn't act the same way that natural grass does. Natural grass not only reduces injury, but it's also better for the environment than artificial turf. So artificial turf doesn't allow water runoff when it rains, and grass lets water seep into the soil and grow more grass. But stormwater runoff can carry the turf pellets into storm drains and can, and can um, uh, damage and pollute uh, water sources. Turf also gets significantly hotter than natural grass. So turf can reach temperatures of 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which can become even just too hot to walk on. And some teams play on colored turf, like you guys can see here, which can draw more sunlight and more heat and damage the players even more. And that blue turf I've played on before, it gets extremely, extremely hot. It's very, very difficult to play on especially in September and August. So natural grass also helps to give back to the environment. Natural grass can provide oxygen to the environment through photosynthesis, and it can break down airborne pollutants, which can make the air cleaner. And finally, I'm gonna talk about a third way that uh, turf has a negative effect on the athletes. So turf conditions um, can contain hazardous chemicals, which can damage the players that play on it. So artificial turf can contain lead, which is an extremely harmful chemical. Excessive exposure to lead is linked to stunted growth and even death. The largest turf manufacturer in North America does make a lead-free turf, but they don't advertise it, and it's significantly more expensive to get. So a lot of teams that are putting in turf just settle for the kind that has lead in it, which is much more dangerous for the players. The shredded rubber in the turf can also be very harmful to the players. It can contain arsenic, which has been linked to cancer. And 
It also has been said to contain cadmium, which can damage one's lungs and can even cause death. Artificial turf is a breeding ground for bacteria, so due to the limited water runoff, blood, sweat, and other bodily fluids can stay in the turf for months, and certain types of bacteria can live in artificial turf for up to nine days. So, as you can see, there's so many negative factors that artificial turf has compared to grass, and you just don't have to worry about these negative aspects when you're playing on a grass field. So artificial turf creates an increased risk of injury, can contain many different types of chemicals and bacteria, and artificial grass helps give back to the environment. So during this speech, I hope you guys learned that I was able to persuade you on why grass is a better playing surface for artificial turf. And now that you know the downsides of artificial turf, you can make more informed decisions about who to bet on in the next game. Thank you.